Good evening. I was hoping that you would join me for my review of the 1959 film, The House. On Haunted Hill. I couldn't close this jacket if I tried. The House on Haunted Hill. There's really a not a whole lot to discuss here. It's only 75 minutes long from beginning to end. And it's a 1959 movie. It's an old black and white Vincent Price classic. I mean, who in the world doesn't know House on Haunted Hill. I've seen the remake of House on Haunted Hill and I've been aware of this movie for countless number of years, but I never actually took the time to sit down and watch the original film with Vincent Price. And Vin by Vincent Price, by the way, if you're a horror fan, you gotta take your, tip your cap. I ain't tipping this cap because it's like soldered onto my head at this point. You gotta tip your cap to Vincent Price. I mean, he is, he's one of the, the, the first modern day horror icons that we've ever had. I mean, you got your old universal guys, but you, I think you understand what I'm saying. Everybody knows Vincent Price. Some bitch even appeared on the Brady Bunch. And, and Gilligan's Eye. When are you on Gilligan? I digress. So Vincent Price's character is a wealthy man who invites five strangers, or at least you think they're strangers, five strangers to a house that he rented, and as long as they make it through, they're like gonna lock the door at midnight. And as long as they make it through the night, why am I holding this? As long as they make it through the night, he will pay each of them $10,000. This house is supposedly haunted. And another thing that's in this house that I found to be very odd was there's like a giant vat of acid in the basement you lift up like a trap door like one of them doors you would see in the evil dead and underneath of that door is basically a swimming pool filled with acid they even make it a point in the movie to say that anything that is covered in flesh or hair that goes into there the only thing that's going to be left is bones there's even one really bad effect in this movie that i don't even know if you can call it an effect they throw what appears to be a dead animal into this vat and what rises to the top appears to be one of those skeleton props that you can buy at like Spirit Halloween of like a cat is floating in the, it's hilarious. You, that, like I said, you can't even call that an effect. So he invites all these people over there. The movie begins, they make it a point to show, he even sent, not only does he invite them to the house, offer to pay him $10,000, he sends cars to pick each one of them up. And as the cars are, very slowly approaching the house they pause long enough to throw you know throw you inside the car so you can get a good look at the face of who is being driven to the house and gives a little bit of a backstory for each of the five people that are on their way to this house inside of that house is vincent price's character the five people that have been invited vincent price's wife who he has a very strange relationship with he seems very passionate for this woman, but then he seems to have as much hatred towards her. He's like got passionate hatred. He hates her with a passion as much as it appears initially that he loves her with a passion and she hates him equally as passionate, if that makes sense to you. So you got the five people, you got Vincent Price and his passionate wife. You have a woman that you are given the impression that she's a ghost, but then you kind of get the feeling that maybe she's not a ghost. And one other guy who, again, you sort of maybe think he might be a ghost. And then on the other hand, maybe he's some sort of a butler or caretaker. But in the end, quite frankly, it doesn't make a difference. So the whole movie is five, six, seven, eight, nine, I believe is nine people. And that's it. My feelings toward the movie were, I, look, I'm, I'm an old school horror guy. I, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and that's, that's like my comfort zone. But as a little kid, I used to watch like the Saturday monster matinee on 
channel 29 or 57 or whatever the hell channel that was. And I loved all those old black and white movies that I watched. And this just falls in suit with all of that. The acting is exactly like you imagine it would be for a 1959 black and white horror movie. I mean, most of the movies from back in that time period with the old black and white film with the Vincent Prices and, you know, people of that ilk, psycho, like back in those days, the acting is all almost always over the top. Hey, everything is acted more back then. I always felt like the acting felt like acting, whereas today people want everything to be more realistic. They want it to feel more realistic. They don't want anything to feel forced or like it's acting. They want it to feel like it's it's human nature or it's second nature. What the hell am I even trying to say? Realism. They want it to feel real. I guess that's why we have like the boom of reality television, which ain't so real. But everybody wants everything to be real, whereas back in the day with films like this and films of this era, Everything is very over the top and very overacted. Where if they see something, you get a close up of people's faces and they scream and run out of a room where that something could be like a mop leaning in the corner or something that scared the hell out of somebody. But that's just the way that the acting felt to me in this movie. And if you're familiar with Vincent Price's stuff, most of that stuff feels exactly like this. And Vincent Price was cool as hell in this movie as he is and all Vincent Price's movies, he was just a cool cat, man. I, cool cat. I just dug Vincent Price. I, I liked him. I I want to I want to watch more of his stuff. I I'm a, I'm a horror fan, and I have been all of my life. And it's almost like I'm almost ashamed to say that I haven't seen tons of Vincent Price stuff. I've seen a lot of it. I've seen a good amount of it. But a lot of that was when I was a kid, and I was watching that monster stuff on TV. Now that I'm older and I'm constantly inundated with paranormal this and Halloween that and slasher this and haunted that, I forget to go back and reach back and grab a hold of the roots of what made me a horror fan. The Universal Monsters, the Vincent Prices and all that kind of stuff, the Alfred Hitchcocks, for God's sakes. But you know, I'm glad that I sat down and watched this movie yesterday. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I actually watched it last night you don't give a shit about that at all. You don't need, I don't even know when you're going to watch this video or if whatever. I'm glad I, I, I reached back and grabbed a hold of this thing and watched it. I was very entertained by it. I actually really enjoyed it quite a bit. There was one, like, again, it's all very over the top stuff. And I noticed in the opening credits that there was actually a line. I, it was either opening credits or the ending credits. There was a line there that said special effects. It's horrible. There was a line there that said uh, special effects. And if if you watch this movie or if you're familiar with this movie, you know good and well hell. There ain't no, there ain't no effects and what little something that could be called effects in this movie, there ain't nothing special about them. I mean, you have the rat that gets thrown in the pool that floats to the top and it's something from the Halloween store. And you also have, there's, there's one thing in this movie that I found to be very laughable. A skeleton comes up out of this, should I say that? A skeleton comes up out of that, that pool. It floats to the top. It starts walking around a room. I'm not going to give any more details about what that turns out to be. But it, it's that's the only thing I can think of you call effects in this movie. I mean, there's one older woman of the five people. You got, like, the good-looking woman. You got the good-looking guy. You got the goofball guy. You got the, the, the sketchy guy. And you have, like, an old lady. Well, the older lady, I don't, she's not old. I mean, like Betty White was old. This lady is older. I'll, I'll, she's around the age of a senior citizen. We'll put it that way. PC. Uh, she has blood drip on the back of her hands a couple times. And she looks up and there's a blood spot on the ceiling. And that is about as special effects as you get in this movie. So that line item at the end of that, it, 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 it or beginning, whatever, whenever it was, that kind of is amusing to me that whoever is responsible for the skeleton and for the cat and for the little bit of makeup on the two ghost slash butler slash housekeeper, whoever the hell they were. And yeah, if that is special effects, 
I love it. That, that's just that that I, I got the biggest kick in the world out of that. Uh, Grand Line. No, it's 1959. Take a breath. I know that you know times have changed and there was no CGI and understood, but that still stood out as pretty amusing to me. You want special effects? Look at the Frankenstein makeup. You know that. Yeah. Is special Karloff. That special <coughs> effects. This was definitely not special effects. But anyway, they got to survive the night. Then if they survive the night, they, they get the money. And it's sort of like, it turns into like a kind of a whodunit thing, which is another thing that was a big theme back then. You, you know, somebody's doing this over here while somebody's doing this over here. So yeah, it's, it's a cat and mouse whodunit type thing. And I just like that stuff. It brings me back to when I was a kid. So overall, I would say definitely watch this movie if you haven't watched it especially if you watch the remake i haven't seen the remake in a very very long long enough time that i really don't remember it very well and i have a feeling that if i go and watch the remake i will probably like the 1959 film more for whatever reason all right well that's it i'm gonna get out of here I, that's a whole lot of rambling but i definitely think that we as modern day horror fans, you know, for those of you who that suits, I think it's good that we reach back and, and touch on these old movies. It's, it's just, it's just good to see where all this stuff actually was, was derived from and where it was, where the back, the origins of all this stuff, there really was stuff back then that wasn't Frankenstein and Dracula and, and the creature from the Black Lagoon. There's a whole lot of good stuff. There's a whole lot of bad stuff. I watched one of those recently too. I'm not gonna get into that here, but it was pretty awful. And it was a classic that I have, no, White Zombie. There, I said it. Not crazy about it. But this movie, The House on Haunted Hill, was very, very good. Give it a watch, check it out. Now I'm done. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like the video and you've been enjoying my content up to this point, please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that bell. These gloves are tight. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day. And thank you for watching. Later, folks. Take care of yourself. Holy crap, that is tight. There's got to be a line.